Hi guys, I'm Brandon, this is Shore Fisherman UK. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be conga bashing on a mark we haven't really fished before. It's a pipe down in Peace Haven. It's really smelly at low tide and at high tide, so I'm assuming it's going to be really good for eels. We're going to be fishing a slightly different version of my running ledger rig today. I'll just show you how I'm going to make that now. I'm going to start off as we always do with a sliding weight clip, which is one of these. Just going to slide that down our line. Then we're going to get a bead out. Now the reason why the rig's going to be slightly different to how it normally is is because one, congas like quite a big bait, they're quite messy eaters, they'll take a big chunk, and um, two, they do bite through line, and because I'm using, this is only 50 pounds, it's, um, it's not enough. So we've just put our bead on the line, going to go for a swivel now, nice strong one, you never know, you might end up with a 50, 60 pound conga on the line. Going to use the same fisherman's knot I always do. Now I am really hoping for something big today. There's a really nice sort of gentle surf. There's plenty of oxygen in the water. Fish are going to love that. We've got some really good baits with us today. So there you go. There's the first part of our running ledger rig made up. It's got a weight clip, a bead and then a swivel. I'm just going to put my weight on this now. I'm using six ounce leads today because it's a southwesterly surf. So um, there's a lot of movement in the water. You want something to hold your bait down nice and tight, especially when you're fishing rough ground. What you don't want is your rig rolling around all over the place because all you're doing there is just asking to get snagged up. For congas, I'm not going to use a massive trace. Be about four foot is going to be enough. Now what I forgot to say actually, we are going to be adding an additional wire trace to this line. So instead of using four feet, I completely forgot, we're going to use about 10 inches under. Remember to take your old line and stick it in your pocket or something, don't just throw it. A lot of tackle shops offer recycling for old line now. So you can take it down to your local tackle shop, give it to them, they'll chuck it in a big, a big bin full of old line and then it will get recycled instead of it ending up in the ocean, which is really not good. So we're tying our 50 pound line onto our swivel now with a fisherman's knot as always. I like to keep things simple. Fisherman's knot has always worked for me. So there's that now we've got our 50 pound line. I'm gonna take one of these little wire traces here. Just gonna pop the first one off. Now there's a swivel just at the beginning of that wire trace. We're just gonna tie that onto our 50 pound line. Fisherman's not again. So now we've got our wire trace, it's nice and strong. Congo aren't going to be able to bite through that. On the end of this little wire trace, there's a little weight clip. We're just going to remove that, we don't need that. Just going to take that off. I think these little wire traces are actually designed for lure fishing. So there you go, that's what we're left with. This has got a little metal loop on the end. What I'm going to do now is grab. A Cox and Raw 6 meat hook. A nice strong hook, perfect for congas. Picked up a brand new pack, especially for today. Now all we're going to do is just go through like that. Grab the loop I was just telling you about. And pull it over the sharp piece of the hook. And just follow that all the way down. And then all we're going to do is just pull that tight. And that's our wire trace made up, guys. That's absolutely perfect. You can pull it all the way down over the eye if you want and tighten it up like that. Which is what I'm doing now. I can't really show you this, guys, because it's so, it's so dark. And this is such a fiddly, sort of small thing to do. I don't know if you guys can see that up close. That's perfectly on that little piece of wire trace. One, if a conga takes that, even if it gut hooks that hook, it's only going to be chewing through that metal line, which it isn't going to break. If it was biting through this 50 pound mono, it'd be through it straight away. 
So what I'm going to do now guys is I'm probably going to bait this up with either a whole squid or I've got some little um, like joey blueies, really small blueies which are perfect for congas. Probably going to whack one of those on and we'll get that casted out and then I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit with some more tips and tricks. Right, so guys, this is the, the little wire trace that I've added on, right? So we've got a little swivel here at the end of our running ledger. This is where we would normally have tied our hook. But right now we've got an extra swivel on and a little wire trace. Now, these wire traces come with a little clip at the end. And some of you might just be tempted just to grab your little cox and raw, whatever size hook you're using, and think, oh, this is nice and easy. I'll just clip my hook straight onto that and then I'm done nice and easy but the reason why I said to remove it is because you are never going to thread that clip easily for a bait right and it's just extra unneeded equipment on your line so just take it off guys the way, the way I'm going to show you now is a very easy way let the clips off we're left with a hoop all we're going to do is put the hoop through the eye of the hook over the sharp bit of the hook and then we're just going to pull it down like this keep pulling keep pulling you can leave it like that that's perfect or you can pull a little hoop right down and tighten it on which is what I like to do just give it a wiggle and a tight pull and there we go guys there's our Cox and Raw 60 meat hook tied straight onto the wire trace with no knots other than the knot on the end of the running ledger so yeah guys this is the perfect way to make a conga rig he's not going to chew through this line it's nice and nice and strong and um yeah we're going to get hopefully some good sized congas out today i'll catch up with you guys in the video when i've got some more tips and tricks for you or if we've got a fish on all right guys so these are these little blueies that we've got we've got about five we've got five in a pack um amino baits just going to open these up now slide one out These honestly, these are so small, they're perfect as, as single baits. We're always going to cut our tails off here. This is just going to stop the bait from spinning around too much while it's in the water. So just pull that tail off. Leave the head on, guys. Now, Bluey is a really, really soft bait. So it doesn't always go right the first time. Especially when you're using a hook with quite a large shank on it we're going to bait this up the same way we bait up any of our other baits that we do here a little bit more tricky baiting one of these up then remember guys we're going to finish and we're going to try and come out the middle like that Spin it and put it through. Go in through the head flesh. Gonna, you're going to find some tough bony bits here. That's fine, just push it through. Try and spin it out in the middle. And that's how that's going to sit. And we're just going to pull all this through tight. It is messy and it isn't, easy, it isn't an easy bait to put on. We've got some new bait elastic here that I'm trying out today. This is Bait X. This is the um, softer stuff. It's going to take a little while for me to get used to using this. If I can even find the end. Nope, it's gone on me. Well, oh, there it is. It's back again. It's gone again. It's back again. I found it. There you go. We're just going to bait elastic this up nice.
There you go guys, that's our conga bait. First one of the night, I'm just gonna go get that cast out now. Okay. Today's supposed to be six miles an hour southwesterly, so I plan to come down here, have a nice relaxed evening, try and catch some conga. Poseidon's got other plans. It's definitely more like 15, 15 to 20 mile an hour southwesterly. It's absolutely freezing. I've got the new flotation suit on. One of the biggest problems with it is, as I, was, I, I, I had to wear it walking down here. And that made me get really hot and I, I've sweat a lot. So the inside of the suit's pretty wet now and, and that sweat has gone freezing cold and now I'm, I'm freezing cold. So I'm not sure if I should bring the suit down in a bag and then load it all on and put it on when I'm down here. I'm not sure. I know I can wear it down here with the top off. Maybe that's an option. But um, we're down here now, we've got two two rods out at the moment, one going off the left of the pipe, one just going off the right of the pipe. Both have got a whole bluey on with that 6.0 meat hook that I put on. So we're just waiting to see if anything happens with that. There's a really nice surf building up. We've got about four to five rollers building up one after the other, which is great for bass. Um, whenever I come down here bass fishing and there's lots of rollers, I always catch conger as well. So. Our target species for the day should be here somewhere. Whether or not they turn up and have a play, who knows? That's the mystery of it, but... Guys, I'm going to bait some mackerel onto this wire trace that I've got now. These are a couple of mackerel that a lady in Peacehaven donated to me. She bought them to eat and then decided she didn't want them. Want them. Cut the head off. I feel like we're going to get quite a good fillet out of this piece. So what I'm going to do is just cut it down there like that. And then we'll fillet that piece on the bone. off that's exactly how I'm just gonna stick that on guys and then we've got the other side left for when we need it like I say again this is a Cox and Raw 6 ohm meat hook just gonna go through the top of the bait the food grade mackerel does tend to be a lot softer so if it will go wrong it's kind of um the way it is, there's not really much you can do about it if you want to use it, it's there. You can always get the better stuff from your tackle box or buy it fresh from the fishmonger. Obviously fresh is always going to be better if you can get it. If you can't then this will do the trick, this is just... For me, this mark, I feel it's going to produce much better results at low. So I'm not putting my best eggs in the basket until we hit that mark at low tide and I can cast off the end of this mark um, and hopefully get a nice bass or a congo on my fresher baits. Now, one thing I will say guys, just a minute ago, I was using Bait X, smooth stuff, thin stuff, 
I didn't think it was any good. It's really, really ultra thin. I like painting the bumps and the ends. I kind of like using cobwebs as bait elastic. I switched over back to my thicker stuff. Much prefer this. I can bait up a lot faster with it too. Same as always guys, we're gonna make sure we get plenty of that bait elastic around the shank of the hook. That's gonna hold that hook, keep that in a nice, nice position for us. I am struggling a little bit today because my hands are just so cold. Last bait, the last bluey baits came back completely untouched. Normal for this time of the year. January is not a very good time for fishing full stop. Um, I think Seaford Beach definitely in my dreams at the moment. It's exactly well, I'd, I'd, I'd much rather have been at Seaford Beach tonight, but it's just not achievable with COVID and everything the way it is at the moment. It'd be unrealistic to go there when no one else is allowed to travel far from home. Um, I'm, not, I'm not like that. I like to follow the rules. So we're just going to get loads of bait elastic on this. Now a few people have said to me, why don't I use pulley panels? Pulley panels on the reef are not a good idea. Having a second hook just means you've got more to get stuck. One hook's enough to get a fish. Uh, I like my chances with that. I think that's perfect, a perfectly acceptable bait for a conger or bass. There is an all right surf out here tonight, so the chances of a bass are pretty decent. At high tide. I mean, if you could get a bait in this about getting snagged up real bad, I think you'd do really well. Lots of little micro species like wrasse and stuff, probably floating around down here as well. Always put things back where you found them, guys. Be kind to nature and it's kind to you. I always take my rubbish with me, put my line in my pockets if little bits and bobs like that. It's good luck. It's good to be good. Respect the scene, it will respect you. I always do well. Um, and I think part of that is because I, I treat the ocean, treat it with respect and the dignity it deserves. That's exactly how it should be. Lots and lots and lots of rock down here. Lots of movable rock too. This would be a good mark to come. Come look for some crab. Got some little sand fleas in there. Nothing really in. Nothing really crab wise. Hanging about in there. That's a pretty cool little little seashell. It's got some fossilised bits on it as well. Be from some sort of worm. There you go, that's back where it belongs. quite difficult guys getting, getting decent footage at, at night time especially with this flotation suit on it's really really restrictive always checking these little here's like a big cave look little cave system All right because you do get you do get lobsters on the reef been a few stories of people finding them it's quite a rarity not going to be something you're going to see every day but it's definitely something that happens always be careful 
when you're doing this stuff bit of scaffolding there look always be careful when you're doing this stuff at night guys I keep saying it always bring someone always bring a friend with you I know at the moment with Covid you're not allowed to meet anyone from outside your household I'm lucky I have someone that lives with me got a pretty cool little cave system going on under here look be a good place for some little fish and maybe a lobster to hide out of the way where no one can find him lobsters are pretty territorial they'll they'll find themselves a home and they'll keep it they'll defend it with their lives they're not very fond of this uh, do you know what this mark will be covered at high tide and this would be an absolute gem of a place to just fish off the end and that's extremely possible because the ledge I fish from is just above me so you could drop little some little hooks down there maybe catch some little little micro species I'm not going to go out my way to lift anything too heavy today guys I don't want to do my back in I've got a lot more fish in hopefully a lot more fishing tonight look for something liftable let's have a little look under this one got to get down on your knees guys it's all part of the fun be nice to get a lobster I'd definitely be taking that home and eating it if I found one things like this big boulder these are the sort of things you want to be looking underneath let's have a quick glance see if you can see anything not really seeing a lot of crab around at the moment haven't seen a single one yet There's normally a lot down here it's normally quite a popular spot for for, for the velvet the hardbacks you get a few spiders down here as well last year the spiders went absolutely mental they were just everywhere I loved it a lot of people didn't made the fishing quite difficult especially off bright marina it was, the floor was just absolutely caked in them you go on um, bright marina fishing facebook group I'm pretty sure there's some pictures on there with a couple of divers went down and got some photographs. I'm always just looking under things, just seeing what I can see, see if I can see any little fish. I've had a friend put a fairly good size. Rass out of the water not long ago, not out of the water, out of a rock pool. That was pretty cool to see. I haven't really done much micro species fishing down on the reef. I definitely think I should. Something I'm going to try and get into this year. Pretty soon, actually, as it goes, I just got myself a new, a new lure rod, which is nine to, I think it's about nine to fifteen grams something light like that and I think that's going to be ideal for some light rock fishing with some small small little freshwater hooks and some small pieces of worm and there's definitely plenty of fishing to be done uh, in the coming months I'm really looking forward to March get a little bit of fishing in before the May rock comes as soon as that May rock comes it's kind of game over for a month it lasted quite long last year, we got about a month and a half worth of May rot, which killed me. I've got to be fishing. Keeps my head straight, it's great, it's great for my health. Sort of medication in a way. 
I love it. I wonder where all this piping sort of comes from. You almost mistake that for a big conga. Yeah, it's definitely empty down here. There's not a lot. I'm not seeing much. I mean, the tide's going out now. There's a lot. There's some nice marks further out. We've still got our baits in the water at the moment, the two two whole blueies, little baby blueies that are stuck out. Waiting for them to pick something. I just had a bit of movement in one of the rods a second ago. Nothing came of that. Now, see, the problem with these boulders is they're all a bit big. I don't really want to be lifting any of them up, to be honest. I'm just going to do my backing if I do and potentially rip my flotation suit, which I've only just bought. It'd be nice if I could even just show you guys a crab, but... Well, there's one that feels like I might be able to move that. Let's see if there's any little blennies. Or anything hiding under there. Got some little anemones. I'll have to put this rock back down. Nice and careful. I don't want to go killing anything under there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down over here just on top of that rock and I'm just going to slowly lower it perfect killing things for no reason guys is never good luck I've seen a couple of posts on Facebook piles of dogfish that have been murdered for absolutely no reason other than just to murder them I don't see why anyone would want to do it doesn't make any sense to me they're harmless harmless creatures yeah, they might piss you off a little bit when you're trying to catch something else, but they're only doing what they were born to do. Everyone needs to eat. I'm pretty sure if you were starving hungry and someone dropped a big T-bone steak in front of you, you're not going to just ignore it, guys, are you? You're going to scoop that up and eat it. I definitely would. Oh, we've got some pretty cool pieces of metal down here. Anything like that, that round thing there, I just not 100 percent sure, but I don't quite like the idea of standing on it. I do, I do want to if you guys know. Drop a comment down in the comments box and I mean that could be a landmine for you know. So you move the hell away from that. Not my cup of tea, I don't fancy getting blown up today. That'll be nice for the missus and the kids, won't it? Oh yeah, where's dad? Ah, uh, there's a good sign. First sign of life on the reef today. Now, that smells quite fresh. That looks like that would belong to a, what would that belong to? A, a spider crab maybe? There's definitely something. That's a good size. That's off a good size crab, that is. It gets me excited for when the tide goes out a little bit more. I'd be interested to see if there's crabs a bit further out. I know that when crabs peel, they don't like to be stranded out of the water, so they'll choose a mark that's fairly shallow most of the time. But a mark that also isn't going to completely dry up because when a crab peels, their, their body's supported by the water. So the minute they come out of it, they just collapse. So guys, when you do come down and get your peelers, if you're new to this, handle them really carefully because if you drop them, they're not going to be any good to you. They're just going to go mushy. Um, and then you would have wasted all your time coming down here. One other thing I would say, guys, invest in some of these crampons. I don't know if you can see them on my feet right now. See them? Little spikes that just go on the bottoms of your shoes. You're gonna grip the, grip things nicely. I'm not slipping around. If I was in just my boots, I'd be sliding around all over the place. 
that's something we can take back home with us and put it in the bin. Definitely something that's going to endanger fish. Get right around something. But down at the um, reef, closer to sort of Bastion Steps, at low tide, I'm almost certain there's a there's a bomb uh, in, just in the rock pools. It's like a um, big dome shape with a big tube sort of sticking out at the end of it. Always got to be careful, guys. If you find something that looks a little bit suspicious, like that thing that I just found, don't go touching it like I just did. I touched it and it moved a bit and I instantly regretted it. Hearts in your mouth for a minute. What you don't want to hear is tick, 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 tick. Because I definitely be running across this reef. really enjoy snagging you up. So they'll come out of their little crevice, grab the bait and just suck it straight in. And if you watch that rod tip on the left rod, you'll see it's still going. Every now and then you're getting that tap. That's still connected to the fish. And right now, it's kind of 50-50. He either sucks it further into his hole or he comes out with it. So I've given him a little bit of room to play and I've given him a little bit of drag. And my rod's out of the rod out of the cup on the rod stand. Ready so I can grab that nice and fast. Because Conga love to go down. You can just see that rod is going. Definitely still connected with the fish. Just got to hope he decides to come out at some point. Right guys, that's it for today's video. A bit of a shame it's another blank again, but we can't, we can't always guarantee catches. That's not how fishing works, it's tough. It's quite hard wearing and you've really got to put some time and effort into it to get these rewards. I'm still going to upload this video, I said I would. I said I'd upload every video whether it was a blank or not. Hope you're enjoying the content. If you are, don't forget to hit that like button. Drop a comment in the comments box and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also turn notifications on so if I do upload a video you get a little buzz on your, on your phone. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care. Cheers.